People begin forming their opinion about you within the first three seconds of meeting you. In fact, you're doing it to me right now while you're watching this video. But once people form an opinion about you, it's pretty hard to change their mind, which means the way you introduce yourself matters. And in this video, I'm going to teach you a simple formula that you can use to create the impression you want every time you introduce yourself to somebody. Stay tuned. Since this is a video about introducing yourself, I should probably start with an introduction, right? Hi, I'm Doug Howard, and I'm a mentor and career coach for engineers, and I specialize in teaching you the non-engineering skills needed to take control of your career. In my previous life as a director and manager, I grew a small engineering department from five people into 40, but I left that career behind to make a bigger impact. I wanted to focus on my true passion, which is helping engineers like you become the best possible version of yourself. In fact, it's why I started this YouTube channel and I post new videos every week. So if you're an engineer who wants to reach your full potential, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In today's episode, I'm gonna explain the consequences of bad introductions, I'm also gonna explain the three reasons why strong introductions are critical to your success. And I'm also gonna give you a simple three-step formula that you can use to introduce yourself to anybody in any setting. Introductions probably feel like a trivial formality to you at this point. You know, you've introduced yourself so many times with so many people in so many different settings that each introduction probably feels like an insignificant passing moment in time. Kind of like every NFL game that begins with a kickoff that goes for a touchback. But I'm here to tell you that introductions not only matter, but they're actually critical to your success. And more importantly, bad introductions can have crucial consequences for you. You see, the way you introduce yourself sets the tone for the rest of your interaction with that person. And when you meet them, you're still a clean slate. So your introduction is your only window of opportunity to really quickly establish trust, project confidence, and show signs that you're personable and approachable. But if you don't, you quickly become forgettable and go unconsidered. And even worse, if you say the wrong thing, and if the other person perceives you as untrustworthy, it's nearly impossible to change that perception. This means that how you answer seemingly simple questions like, tell me about yourself during an interview, can make the difference between getting an offer, being forgotten, or getting denied. Which leads me into the three reasons why introductions are critical to your success. Now, as I walk through these reasons, I'll be using interviewing for a job as the main example, but these principles apply to networking, making friends, talking to your waiter at the restaurant, dating, and basically any scenario where you're gonna be introducing yourself to someone. The first reason why introductions are critical to your success is that the introduction initiates your momentum in the conversation. You know, the way you introduce yourself will drive the momentum for the rest of your interaction with that person. A good introduction creates positive momentum and it works in your favor, while a bad introduction creates negative momentum and it works against you. At the very beginning of this video, I told you that people begin forming opinions about you within the first three seconds of meeting you. Here's how that works. When you first meet someone, you start off with a clean slate, so the other person enters with a completely open mind about you, which means they're still easily impressionable. But as quick as three seconds into the conversation, the person slowly becomes less open-minded. Think of it like a spectrum, with open-minded on one end and closed-minded on the other end. As the conversation continues, the bar continuously moves closer to the closed-minded end of the spectrum. And after a few minutes, the person is more than 50% closed-minded. This matters because now the person goes from impressionable mode, that's where they're still viewing you objectively and with an open mind, they switch from that mode into confirmation bias mode. And this means that the other person has formed opinions about you, so instead of trying to learn more about you, they're simply trying to confirm their opinion about you is right. Now, before you get annoyed with this, this doesn't make them a bad person. In fact, everyone does this. You even do it. It's how our brains are wired, and it's all subconscious too. You don't even realize you're doing it. But this is why it's difficult to change someone's opinion about you shortly after introducing yourself. And this doesn't mean that it's impossible to change someone's mind about you. It just means that it will take a lot more work, effort, and creativity. You know, think of it like gravity. You know, if you're trying to move a 100 pound block up a hill, you know, it probably feels like you're trying to move a 1000 pound block because you're working against gravity. This is what happens when you make a bad first impression. For the rest of that conversation, you're working against their confirmation bias. 
So you basically have to work 10 times harder just to change their mind about you. However, if you take that same 100 pound block and move it downhill, it's almost effortless because gravity does the work for you. So when your introduction creates a positive first impression, you basically have gravity or confirmation bias working in your favor because now the other person has a positive opinion of you and they're just trying to confirm that their opinion is right. This means that the other person becomes more willing to overlook your potential flaws. It's basically the difference between being innocent until proven guilty or guilty until proven innocent. And this leads me to the next reason why introductions are so important. But first, I wanna make sure these tips and insights are interesting, useful, and helpful. So let me know by tapping that like button. Okay, the second reason why introductions are so important is because introductions are a two-way street. Yes, people are measuring you up when you introduce yourself, but it's a two-way street, which means it's also your chance to measure up the other person. In an interview, it's your chance to read the person who's interviewing you. You know, do you feel like they're being sincere and genuine with you? You know, would you like working for this person? Or, you know, do you think this person is untrustworthy? Are they just kind of selling you a bill of goods so that you get tricked into taking a job that you're not a good fit for? However, if you're stressing over how you're going to introduce yourself during these moments and, you know, overanalyzing what you're going to say, then you're basically wasting this opportunity to gauge and read the other person. Meanwhile, from the other person's perspective, as you're stuck in your head, you know, overanalyzing what to say, to the other person, it looks like you're not paying attention to them which hurts you even more because people pick up on these things. And this leads me to my third and final reason why introductions are so important. And that's because people can sense confidence. People aren't just listening to what you say. They're also picking up on your nonverbal cues, like your speaking pace, your tone of voice, your posture, your facial expressions, and so on. We make judgments of people we meet based on split-second reactions, even when we're presented with countervailing facts and evidence. Malcolm Gladwell calls this thin slicing, and it's basically like deciding to swipe left or right, but in real time. And one thing that people are immediately attracted to is confidence. When you're able to project confidence, it sends messages of trust and openness, interest, respect, warmth, all positive things. It sends these signals to the other person, and it basically makes the other person want to like you. However, if your introduction is a little shaky, or if you're scrambling to answer a straightforward question like, tell me about yourself, it basically projects the opposite of confidence. But when your introduction is calm, smooth, and clear, it radiates confidence. And you can create this impression every time you introduce yourself by following a simple three-step formula that I call present, past, future. And I'll explain how it works in a sec. But if you want a clean and condensed summary of this formula, along with all the other key points from this episode, you can download my free PDF. Just click on the link in the description. Okay, here's how present, past, future works. You start with the present. And what I mean by that is when you introduce yourself, lead with a present tense statement about yourself. Here's an example. Hi, I'm Doug Howard, and I'm a licensed engineer. But my current focus is helping engineers build non-engineering skills through my YouTube channel. Consider the situation and the audience when you're deciding what information you want to share. When in doubt, just share your name and your job title. But if there's an opportunity to elaborate, you can share details about your expertise or a project that you're working on or, or perhaps where you're from or where you live. Here's another example. Hi, I'm Doug Howard and I'm a structural engineer and right now I'm in the middle of working on a multi-year project designing a series of commercial warehouses for Macy's department stores. My favorite part about my current job is that I get an inside look at how some of the biggest companies in the world make their products. Okay, the second part of your introduction should be in the past tense. This is where you can share relevant information about your background and your experience. But more important, this is your opportunity to build credibility with the other person. Here's an example. My background is in structural engineering and leadership. As a manager, I took a small five-person engineering department and I built it into a team of 40 people. And before I was a manager, I was the lead engineer at a small private firm that specializes in custom designing heavy equipment platforms for military training facilities. Consider which information about you is relevant to your audience. If it's a job interview, You'll obviously want to focus on talking about your work experience, projects you've worked on, previous employers, your credentials, your accomplishments, and so on. By the way, if you want to sharpen your interviewing skills, you should check out my episode called Ask These Eight Questions in Every Interview. Just click on the link in the description. 
But in regards to considering your audience, if this is an informal introduction, like at a party, you know, you can use work to segue into something about your past that's more personable and more fun. So if you're talking about previous work experience, you should tie it into the impact it had on you or what did it mean to you? Here's an example. After graduating from college, I really thought that I wanted to design skyscrapers, but after working for a few years, I discovered that my true passions and strengths were in leadership, so I quickly pivoted my career in that direction. Or you could ignore work altogether and craft your introduction in a way that's completely fun and personable. For example, I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but my fiance and I moved to New York last year because we had a once in a lifetime opportunity to live in a beautiful house on the Finger Lakes, as you can see in my background. Or another example is, I'm an engineer now, but honestly, my favorite job that I ever had was back when I was in college. I was a wedding DJ, and something about playing music for a crowd full of people that were just looking to celebrate and have a good time every weekend, along with some free drinks and dinner, I mean, it was kind of like the perfect job for a 21-year-old. The third and final part of this formula is future-focused. This is your chance to show your enthusiasm for what's coming up on the horizon. In a job interview, you can share your excitement and eagerness towards opportunities with the company that you're applying for. For example, the idea of working in a fast-paced environment with a small startup company has me really excited because it provides me with plenty of opportunities to grow and learn with the company. If you're in a meeting, you can show your interest in the meeting topic. I'm really looking forward to this meeting and solving these challenges because it's gonna save us a lot of time, stress, and money. If you're kicking off a project, show that you're excited about the goals of the project. I was thrilled when I found out I'd be working on this project because it's my first opportunity to get out in the field and actually see the product. The key with this part of the formula is that it has to be something you're genuinely excited about, so don't fake it, don't lie. As a quick recap, the next time you're preparing for an interview or going into a setting where you're going to be introducing yourself, take a moment and think to yourself, present, past, future, then quickly craft your introduction. And now that you have a simple framework to follow when introducing yourself, I wanna know what you think is the worst part of introducing yourself. What makes it feel so awkward and uncomfortable? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.